Alright, how's it going everyone? Today I'm going to be playing a visual novel called Umbra, which you may recall from one of our VN podcasts that we did a few weeks ago. It was episode 9. I had some mixed feelings about this visual novel, uh, mostly due to the quality of the beginning, which I felt was kind of slow and didn't work too well. But as the game went on, I found it to get a little bit intriguing, and the more I played it, the more drawn in I got to it. So I'm going to give it a little bit of a show off here to see, uh, to show you guys just how uh, it progresses, which if you watch long enough, you might see that's a bit interesting. And already you might be able to tell there's a bit of an eerie music to it, so let's get into things. Fear is a strange thing. Security is the same. As long as you have security, you don't have to fear. That is something simple. But what gives you security? Is it some kind of faith? Some belief in the governmental power? Believing that people are good? Trust in someone to protect you? Every day, millions of people head out with the feelings of security, but why? Any time, any day, any moment, their life could be taken from them. There's no such thing as true security. What those people have is a belief in false protection. Do you know why people can do things during the day? The reason they have schools for children during the day, but they aren't allowed out at night? It is because of sunlight, of light, the power of sight. Because we can see things, we believe that we have security. That is why people fear the dark, they fear the night. Because you can't see, anything can be hiding in the dark. People live life smiling. They can run around, work, play, do anything they want without much care, because there's light. In light, you can tell what is what. However, in darkness, nothing is what it seems. Shadows that seem harmless might have a sinister desire. In light, there is happiness. In darkness, there's only fear. For you can't see, anything could be hiding in the shadows. Once light is lost, once sight is lost, only fear remains. Yeah, the font size is a bit low in this game, so... Unfortunately, you're gonna have to deal with that for this one a bit. Uh, we do have a bit of an intro, so... I will say that... Yeah, I don't really like that intro so much. It's kind of a bit... I mean, like I mentioned, the first time I played this game, I didn't really see... I didn't read the thread on it to see what would be coming up ahead. So it kind of foreshadows a bit of what's happening, and I kind of like going to it blind, but... Eh, we'll see what happens. Alright, got that little bit of an intro out of the way. So yeah, I know there's a couple of things in that intro that move a bit quickly. Like, they have lines of text and you can't really read it all. But, yeah, some interesting runes, some mysterious bits of text. A lot to process so far. But the rest of the intro, uh, it kind of takes a different turn, at least for a while. A school classroom. A place most students rushed out of as soon as the bell rang. Still had three students in it. The evening sun caused the room to be filled with a rainbow of autumn colors. My best friend and I currently sat on two of the desks, like the delinquents that we were. We tried to muffle our laughter as we watched the blind girl in front of us try hopelessly to find her book bag. And this is the part of the game where you kind of feel <laughs> a bit like you're scum, as you'll see in a few moments. A little to the left. I spoke out the directions as I tried not to laugh. It would ruin everything. she known that I was misdirecting her. The girl standing on the ladder in front of the shelving unit in the back of the room moved a little to the left and began to feel around. Too far, it's to the right now. She nodded, signaling that she understood and began to move to the right. However, what she didn't know was that the bright red backpack she was currently feeling around for 
was not on the shelving unit at all. In fact, the flower sticker covered strap was in my friend's possession. I can't seem to find it. Are you sure I left it over here? Yeah, I see it. It's just a little above your arm now. Okay. She trusted us. She believed our deception. It made me frown a little. How could she be so trusting towards us? We constantly messed with her, and she and we used her disability for our entertainment. Yeah, so pretty much as you can see in the intro, the main character is a dick. Uh, yeah, that's... It's actually kind of an important part of the story later, which you, you kind of figure out, but it definitely makes you feel like, you know, why should I care for this guy at first? So I, I don't know. I feel like they could have done something a little bit better for the intro. At least for the first scene where you see the guy. I glanced at my friend. He was snickering. It made me feel a little messed up. I tried to get his attention to express my unease. He shook his head trying to tell me to let it go. He was having too much fun to stop. He put one finger to his lips, telling me to be quiet. It's higher. You need to reach higher. No, higher. She was stretching so high her skirt was starting to rise too high. From our low angle, we were starting to see stuff. And yeah, that's where things get a bit uncomfortable. Yeah, your, your main character is not only a delinquent and rude to people that are blind, but he's also a perv. Riker threw the bag, and it landed with a thump at the foot of the ladder. You knocked it down. Now you just need to bend down and pick it up. Complete innocence, complete trust, she bent over and began to reach around the floor for her bag. I shook my head. We were going too far this time. This is borderline sexual harassment. It pretty much is at this point. Just saying. I closed my eyes. I had no interest in seeing and getting accused of having wandering eyes. I had a girlfriend, one I wanted to keep, and this probably isn't the best thing to do if you have a girlfriend. Just saying. The door to the classroom flew open at that moment and two people I didn't want to see stormed in. Tone's best friend, and her knight in shining armor, her older brother. What do you think you're doing, you pigs? Without waiting for my brain to actually start thinking, I blurted out a weak defense. I closed my eyes! I still got a slap in the face. Literally. You could have stopped it. Sierra rushed over to her friend's side while giving Riker a nasty glare. I pointed to Riker outraged. He was just as guilty as me. And he doesn't get a slap? That's real fair. Reed's fists clenched. We were in trouble now. While messing with Tone was fun, once her brother entered the picture, things got ugly fast. We'd gotten quite a handful of bad fights. No one was required a hospital visit, one even required a hospital visit and police charges. Something that his mother and my parents were very hostile about, believing that I got off easy, only because my dad was the arresting officer. Well, I think that just might have something to do with it. Though if they thought I got off easy, they should visit my house. My punishment was brutal. I'm going to kill you guys. Riker pointed at me. His dad will throw you in jail. Reed closed the distance between us. Your point, Kogan? I've had it with you. Come on, I'm basically innocent here. He was standing so close, his breath was almost on top of mine. He snatched up my collar. It looked like we were going to get into another fight. Well, I was no weakling. Reed was bigger and stronger than me. As much as I hated to admit it, he could clean my clock. You're dead this time, Kogan. I don't care what bullshit your dad tries to pull. You're gonna finally get yours. Hey, don't talk about my dad like that. <laughs> and one thing that our main character has is he has some issue with her, with his dad being talked poorly about, which is just kind of funny and out of place. Like, the guy's threatening to beat him up and the first thing he takes offense to is his dad being insulted. Uh, this happens a few times, as we'll see. I was getting angry now. <laughs> and this is the part of the game where things kind of get a bit ridiculous. Like, I think they're trying to make it look like the characters are approaching the screen, but instead they just stretch up to ridiculously unnatural proportions. <laughs> like, they get much wider than they should be. I don't know what the deal with that is, but I found it quite funny the first time. Stop it! <laughs> we both received a shove as Tone forced herself between us. It calmed me down. I was about to get stomped and I realized it. She looked towards her brother. No fighting you two. 
You know what Dad said. She looked at me. Stop, please. Well, it wasn't really my choice. I was the one about to be killed, not the kill E. Yeah, I I'm not really sure what this one is supposed to be. I kind of feel like they want to say killer? I don't know why he says killy there. That, that line kind of bothers me. But whatever, maybe her character's just supposed to be dumb. But is anyone really that dumb? I don't know, I guess. She looked so fragile. I guess in reality, her disability probably made her that way. Reed frowned but nodded. He put his arm around his sister and began to escort her out. He gave me a parting glare on his way out. Sierra waved a finger at us, like we were kids getting scolded. Well, you kind of are. If I ever see you guys messing with Tone again, you don't even want to know what I'm capable of doing with a blade. Well, that's a bit harsh. I mean, feel free to report these characters because that was pretty rude and, like they said, borderline sexual harassment, but threatening with the blade, eh, eh, that's a bit much. She let her threat hang as she left the room. With the three of them gone, the tension vanished in a moment. Haha, <laughs> did you see that man? That was awesome. Yeah, guess who the more douchey one of the two is? I chuckled a little unsure of my own feelings. It was fun, but it also made me feel something else too. Well, I hope guilty, maybe? Remorse? Too bad they had to show up and ruin it. We were just making it really good. That's life. Whenever something good's about to happen, someone has to show up and ruin it. Like the time when you're when you and your girl were kissing and your dad caught you? I wince at the memory. Do not remind me of that time. I'd just been about to start doing things with my hands during the kiss when dad spoke up. He might have just been silently watching, or maybe just entered my room, but the words that came out of his mouth were something that caused us to jump. If you want to keep those hands, I suggest you keep them to yourself. And that, that sounds something more to me that the girl's dad would have said more than his dad. But I don't know, maybe it's a strict dad who doesn't like him doing anything. And my dad was the type to do something like that too. He would cut off my hands and make up some kind of story about how a bear attacked me or something. Uh, that seems a bit exaggerated. Or maybe just admit to it straight out. No one would <laughs> Really? No one could convict him? I kind of doubt that, even if you're a police officer. If your child is like, maimed by you like, cutting off his hands, I think that might get some notice. No one would even convict him. He is, after all, one of the town's most respected people. Don't you have to meet her? Riker pulled me from my memories, which was something I was glad about. Huh? Your girl. My eyes went wide, and my breath got caught in my throat. Oh, crap! I was screwed. How could I have forgotten? Sasha's gonna be ticked. I'll catch you later, man. I dashed out of the classroom, rushing to the library where we'd always meet at. You're late. I hadn't even reached her yet, and she was already scolding me. Late, 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 Mr. Late, Late McLaderton. Yuck. I stopped running when I reached her and bent over to recover my breath. I wasn't that athletic of a person, so running from one side of the school to the other was enough to make me have to take a break. I'm sure I looked so lame. And stay like that. What? No, you have to stay like that. I tried to raise my back and head to look at her, but she quickly protested and put her hands on my head. You have to listen to what I say for a moment. This is your punishment for being so late. I frowned but obeyed. Just how long did this stay like this? It kind of hurts. I think I just felt something on my back. What is she doing? Stop being a baby. I was just asking. I'm almost done. Done with what? Okay, I definitely felt weight on my back now. Something was on my back and it was heavy. Books? Alright, now let's walk home. With me like this? Yep, you have to walk home like that, while holding my books. Doesn't sound like the most efficient way to travel around, but hey, man, it's just me. Yep, it's her books. What if I drop one? We are history. I narrowly stopped myself from flying up and causing them to fly. What? Just kidding. I couldn't see her face, but I could tell from her tone that she was enjoying herself. I'd hope so. That's only if you drop all of them. 
I gulped. It sounded legit. And so we began our trek towards the entrance of the school. All the while I was worried about one thing. Damn. I gulped as I stared at the stairs. They never seemed so close before. We were on the second floor, my nemesis had appeared. Sorry, sweetie. I heard her voice behind me. What was this mischievous tone? Hmm? Whoa! Ah! Without warning, I received a push from behind. <laughs> and yeah, she just pushes us down the stairs just like that. Over the top much? Eh, maybe so. I suddenly got closer to the stairs, more so than I ever wanted to. I saw them up close, only inches away from my face as I stumbled past them. Ow! I rubbed the back of my head. Thank goodness it was my back that hit the stairs and not my head. But it still hurt when I hit the wall behind the stairs. Yeah, because that's a fun prank to pull that doesn't ever result in people receiving serious injuries falling down the stairs. Yeah. Sorry, I just couldn't resist. Now I'm the mad one. She began pouting. But I said I was sorry. Not gonna work. She leaned in and put her lips just centimeters from my own. I could feel her hot breath on them. And she just remained there. It drove me mad. It was cruel torture. I started to move a little forward. I wanted to capture those lips, to pull her into my arms and begin a long session in the stairway. But she is evil. She pulled away. Sorry, this is your punishment too. I wanted to throw my arms up in the sky and cry. This was unfair. This was pure torture. How could she be so heartless? She's supposed to love me. I folded my arms and turned away from her. Stop pouting. She leaned back and gave me a quick peck. On the cheek. On the frickin' cheek. That's just more torture. This is too much. I smirked. I grabbed her and pulled her into my arms. Hey. I began kissing her neck. Stop, this isn't supposed to happen. We're on the stairs at school. Don't care. Well, I do. It is your fault. You kept teasing me. Y yeah, that's not a line you should usually say or use or do ever. Ah, stop. What if someone sees? Reluctantly, I stopped and released Sasha from my grasp. Bad. She waved her fingers at me like I was a puppy she was scolding for taking something they shouldn't. I just shrugged and stood up. Bad. I leaned in and gave her a quick peck on the cheek before running up, before running by her down the stairs. And that's even worse. I turned around to laugh at her as she ran after me. You liked it. Tease. What goes around comes around. Tease me and I'll tease back. <laughs> well, I guess they're uh, fair to each other, if nothing else. Our little games continued until we got to the entrance. Sasha stepped outside into the evening sun. It cast her in an orange glow. She looked like some kind of angel, but that fit perfectly. She was my angel. What are you waiting for? Let's go home. She held her hand out to me. We'd always walk home together that way. It just felt natural to us. It would be a lie to say that she wasn't the most important thing in my life. I don't know what I'd do if she wasn't there to take my hand. What are you spacing out for? I just smiled at her. Everything just came so easy with her. Things just felt right. Nothing bothered me. Stop grinning like an idiot and take my hand. Will these feelings fade away? Will I fall off my cloud? I don't know, but I hope not. I feel alive when I'm with her. I took her hand. I squeezed it lightly. Feeling the warmth and her pulse coming from her veins, we were both alive, and we were both together. What are you doing? Just thinking about you and how I feel so at peace with you around. Gee, stop saying such things like that. It's embarrassing. Can't help it. They just appear in my head and the words fly out without me realizing it. Little does she know I say stuff like that all the time in my head. She let out a sigh and then smiled at me. Oh well. It is nice to be fond over. I couldn't help but observe everything about her as we walked. I always did this. I just watched her as she talked about her day. Every detail about her was interesting. Each little motion she did with her hand, as she would animatedly talk to me. The way her body moved and swayed. The way her facial muscles moved. How her hair blew around in the wind. I could watch her all day and never get bored. She knew I wasn't a talkative person, so most of the time our walks consisted of me just 
listening over or giving minimal input. I watched her shiver a little in the cold autumn wind. Trying to be like a good boyfriend, I pulled her close and put my arm around her shoulder. I didn't have a jacket, so I couldn't give her anything to keep her warm. The only thing I had was my own body heat. Her expression went from surprised, unsure, and then to nervous. Did I do something I shouldn't have? I might have came on a little too strong. You looked cold, and I wanted to... I know, you just surprised me a little. It's okay, I feel safe in your arms. I could feel her body against my own. I could feel her heat warming me up. And before I wanted it to end, it was over. We had reached the point where we went our separate ways, her house. I don't want to split yet. It's getting late, Evan. I frowned. Sasha's family was strangely afraid of the dark. It was something I didn't understand. But ever since she was a little kid, she was forbidden to be out once the sun set. Even her own parents didn't set foot outside at night. I just don't get it. Don't start this again. I let out a sigh. I didn't want to start anything. I just want to spend more time together. Alright, I respect it, but I'm not happy about it. I want to see you more. Thank you. I'll see you Monday. She ignored most of what I said. Gonna be a long weekend. Your own fault for getting in trouble and being punished. I let out a sigh. I know it is. Doesn't mean I have to like it. She gave me a quick peck on the lips. Till Monday. I feel like I'm getting punished by you as well. She let out a giggle as she started to walk up the stone path to her front door. Maybe you are. I watched her as she gave me the one last smile before going inside.